I'm Jack Rutberg, and I have the privilege of presenting this exhibition, Hans Burkhardt in Mexico. We bring this exhibition to light because the Getty Museum has created this enormous endeavor called Pacific Standard Time LALA. LALA standing for Los Angeles, Latin America bringing together more than 70 institutions and tens of galleries from Santa Barbara to San Diego, we've observed that virtually every museum has keyed upon, with very few exceptions, artists of Latin America. Well, Los Angeles' history is so profoundly connected to Latin America that we had to bring forth the exhibition of an artist, an American artist, a Los Angeles artist, most strongly connected to Latin America, and that is Mexico. Hans Burkhardt was born in Basel, Switzerland in 1904, left Switzerland for New York in 1924. In New York, he early on had associations with Arshiel Gorky, having studied at Cooper Union and ultimately uh, studied with Arshiel Gorky, Burkhardt became not only a favored student, but ultimately a studio mate, colleague, friend, and champion of Arshil Gorky's. When he left New York for Los Angeles late in 1937, he brought with him an aesthetic that was virtually unknown in Los Angeles. Having evolved through this sort of uh, Cezannean influences and Gorky's uh, investigations of Picasso and Miro. Burkhardt absorbed the modern sensibility in a way that is nearly unfathomable for an American artist. Of course, his origins are Europe. There's a, he's steeped in European sensibilities, and his Cubist surrealist sensibility was absolutely in full maturity when he came to Los Angeles. He had painted some of the most extraordinary works of that time. In L.A., Burkhardt evolved through this process of being a reactive painter. These were provocative times. The war broke out, the Spanish Civil War led to World War II, and Burkhardt felt so deeply, so passionately. I mean, the empathy of this man's work is unfathomable and un incomparable. In the 40s, Burkhardt created a remarkable body of work much of it in protest of war, but always in harmony and in balance with works of hope and celebration of life. He was drafted in the army in 1942 for a very short time. Hans was no soldier and because of his age, there was a law that allowed him to go back to civilian life and he worked in the aircraft uh, industry, creating airplane parts for the war effort all the long painting, paintings of hope. That short stint in the army made him eligible for the GI Bill, which allowed returning veterans to go to schools and be subsidized for that, and that included foreign travel. And Burkhardt, who had already had tremendous success in Los Angeles, he had a solo exhibition at the Los Angeles County Museum in 1945. That exhibition, incidentally, was cited as perhaps the top show of the year by the Los Angeles Times. I have that Los Angeles Times review, and it's only until five years ago that LACMA even had any knowledge of that show existing. So history in Los Angeles loses traction at every step of the way. Time has never been favored in Los Angeles, except future time. So we come now to an era where documentation exists through films like this, through exhibitions, and we learn that Hans Burkhardt is not only a seminal artist for Los Angeles, but he stands apart virtually in the entire 
canon of 20th century art. So in 1950, Burkhardt, in spite of having a thriving career as a painter, having had many exhibitions, and even that solo exhibition at the County Museum in 1945, decides he's going to go to Mexico on the GI Bill where he will not have to work but devote himself fully to painting for the first time in his life. He goes to Mexico, this modernist, he's excited about losing himself in the studio, and he gets to Mexico and he discovers this world of antiquity. It's a world that he has some empathy for. Remembering now that Burkhardt came from Basel, Switzerland. He was there in very bleak times, World War I and so forth, and had a very Dickensian childhood and upbringing. He knew and understood hardship, and he empathized very profoundly with the indigenous culture, the spirituality of it, the poverty, the enlightenment, the joy. These contrasts were everything that Burkhardt understood and the first thing he wanted to do was discover their own culture. He studied, as he said, he went to the saloons, the churches, cathedrals, the, the mortuaries, the graveyards, and he steeps, steeped himself in the culture of Mexico. The empathetic qualities that had been evident in Burkhardt's anti-war paintings of World War II, which always, in fact, dealt with the plight of its victims, never accusatory, never political, but always humanist in its response. That is echoed in Mexico, where Burkhardt discovers not only a remarkable landscape, the villages, but the people. And little had its impact as much on Burkhardt as were the incredibly great numbers of funeral processions. The culture of Mexico was extraordinary. The celebration of the dead, the sadness of, of the passage, but the joy and release of the journey into the better world. And Burkhardt captured this. And what is so remarkable in viewing Hans Burkhardt's work is that while many artists have developed a kind of sensibility their track has been narrow in its applications. What we see in Burkhardt from the very beginning to his very last paintings of the 1990s is that Burkhardt evolves with his time and is reflective and is reactive to that time. In this exhibition, we see some very surprising works, very realistic works. Burkhardt always said, God made nature so perfect, why should I copy it? I cannot make it any better, so I have to make it my own. But what the artist does, however, in traveling is recording his experience in a sketchbook. In this case, there are actual paintings that we have here which show the remarkable abilities of Hans Burkhardt to capture a scene, not only as it's seen, but as it's felt. And in a few instances in this exhibition, one sees some very seminal works where shapes that he found in Mexico would be somehow evocative and evolving into works through his very final works of the Black Rain series. We see here works that are so seminal in understanding Burkhardt's works. The funerals, the burials, the carrying of the lost one, the post and lintel forms that we see reflected in so many of Burkhardt's works. This was the passage into the better world. Think about the Day of the Dead and the celebration. Truly, Hans used to speak about how an angel would be born in those occasions. That's what the peasants would speak of. We see here the further abstraction. We can sense the cathedrals, the, the energy of the marching festivities, 
This is called Holiday. It's from 1956. And we start to see the complete abstraction that's coming into play here with the Mexican flag. It's a wonderful example of how Burkhardt really tried to capture the sense of the festivities rather than depicting it in absolute narrative fashion. But the narrative never really escapes Burkhardt. He wants to capture a recollection of a scene. And those that have been to San Miguel Allende will know this scene very well. And we see here that Burkhardt is imminently capable of painting a subject as it is. But for Burkhardt, the sensuality is in the expansiveness of abstraction and finding his own way. It's a beautiful depiction of San Miguel Allende as it still exists today. But in that narrative, Burkhardt can't help but find the beauty of abstraction and discovery in the random marks that are found in the streets. You know, walking down the street with Hans Burkhardt, it was my experience, we could walk 20 paces when then Burkhardt would suddenly say, look at that. And there would be a crack in the sidewalk or a stain in the cement or on a wall and Hans would discover an entire scene, a beautiful landscape. Here in this abstraction of these stairs to essentially nowhere, but this beautiful abstraction of the wall, Burkhardt captures here his fascination with the graffiti. And these marks are rather wonderful. You know, it was in 1981 that Burkhardt did a graffiti series long before we were really speaking of graffiti as a mainstream. But Burkhardt was always fascinated by marks on walls. And indeed, major artists uh, such as Kippenberger was directly influenced by Burkhardt's graffiti paintings. And here you see with this sort of scruffiti, the scratching into the walls, these beautiful designs. And you see the true modernist coming to light. The abstract balance and harmony of shapes is found in nature, and Burkhardt didn't have to exaggerate, but merely to isolate and find this wonderful composition in these walls of San Miguel de Allende. In his study of Mexican culture was also the recreation, the, the play of children, but in this case, something much more fierce and provocative in this depiction of a Mexican cockfight. Hans often spoke about the joy in watching the children at play. And then we have here this painting from 1950. It would be one of the earliest works that Burkhardt created in that decade of spending time in Mexico, more than a decade. Here we see Burkhardt still wanting to be purely abstract in his depiction of these children by candlelight. He talked about walking by in the evening and seeing these children sitting around a table and the glow, this magical glow of these children captured his interest and he went to the studio and started this painting. Among those earliest of paintings when Burkhardt arrives to Mexico was his visits to the 
graveyards and the catacombs and in this case we see this abstraction from the catacombs this deep space a kind of bowed figure a beautiful painting entitled departure those catacombs would serve as again this kind of thumbprint that we see imprinted throughout the body of work the cascade of abandoned coffins which had a sculptural element Burkhardt found this very fascinating he loved those forms and he employed them in his paintings and those shapes often represented for Burkhardt evidence of a presence or a passage of a soul employing that same subject of the catacombs that that deep space we see how Burkhardt employs these aspects of architecture, crucifixion, deep space, burials into this remarkable, so sensitive, this beautiful, surreal work entitled Gateway to Eternity. And in this masterpiece, Guadalajara, City at Night, one can understand why Burkhardt received several museum exhibitions in Mexico. There were those in Mexico and in Los Angeles who said that Burkhardt deserved to stand equally with the Mexican masters and that he truly captured the spirit of Mexico. We see here in this painting entitled Journey, one of these magnificent paintings of the passage, the journey into the unknown. And we see here the post and lintel forms that first captured Burkhardt's attention in the burials, but they were somehow celebratory and beautiful and soulful in this journey to a better place. One of Burkhardt's very first paintings in Mexico was in his reflection of his lost friend, Arshiel Gorky, who had committed suicide only two years earlier. And Burkhardt was deeply moved in reflecting on mortality because it's so much a part of Mexican experience. And we have here this masterful work of the journey into the unknown. That painting of the burial of Arshiel Gorky was shown at the Metropolitan Museum in New York City in 1951. The loss of his friend and mentor, Arshil Gorky, had a tremendous impact on Hans. And being constantly reminded of that in Mexico, Burkhardt painted several paintings. Actually, Burkhardt painted two versions of the studio of Gorky, reminiscences of Gorky, very much in that same manner we have here Hans Burkhardt in his studio. So there are parallels to those paintings of Arshil Gorky in his studio. And here we see the artist and palette in this beautiful abstraction of the interior. Perhaps Burkhardt's paintings of Mexico are most evocatively distilled in this series entitled Silent Sounds. Burkhardt was in San Miguel Allende, the city of bells, churches were everywhere, and the bells rang constantly. And as Burkhardt was working in his studio making paintings, he could project the reasons for those bells ringing, the time of day, weddings, funerals, etc. But most often, they were for funerals. And the bells most often rang for the one that could no longer hear them. And Burkhardt poetically creates these works evocative of sounds of these bells at different times. Burkhardt was a great lover of nature and what he found in Mexico was the exotic tropical colors 
the landscape was magnificent, the jungles, and he captured that sensuality in great numbers of abstract landscapes. Here we have a painting entitled Black Cloud Over Vineyard, and one can see these spiky forms, the flowers, bugs, insects, and so forth. And here we have this, again, very sensual abstraction, a very provocative work by Los Angeles standards. This was actually shown at the Sao Paulo Biennale, the third Biennale, in 1955, where Burkhardt was the only artist with three works in the exhibition. All the other artists were allowed one, two at most. But it must be stated that in these incredible abstractions, which would rank among the great abstract expressionist paintings of their time. In Los Angeles, this sort of art came under great attack. Burkhardt came back to Los Angeles frequently because he had to renew the visa and he had a home here, but he would come here for short durations, would be exhibited in galleries throughout Los Angeles and throughout the nation. In the 1950s, Burkhardt in fact, was probably the most exhibited artist pre-1980. In spite of the hostility toward abstract art in Los Angeles, Burkhardt somehow had an incredible 23 solo exhibitions in that decade alone. More than 30 museum exhibitions, group exhibitions, throughout the nation, and of course in Mexico as well as Sao Paulo. So we find a history that is unfathomably lost, reasserting itself, and what we learn about Hans Burkhardt is he is not only a significant artist of Los Angeles, but in fact one of the most complex and astounding artists of his entire epoch. So we are ecstatic to be able to present this decade of Hans Burkhardt and give it that context as both one of the earliest modernists and following these 1950s to create paintings that some art historians have cited as among the great paintings of the 20th century. And this doesn't stop till the 1990s with Burkhardt's final painting, a poignant work from the Black Rain series entitled The Extra Stripe. And Hans stated that the extra stripe was for hope.